see so many people turn into so many people turn into learn about fireflies. Um, I've been running, or I started running the Firefly Citizen, uh, Citizen Science Program back in 2008. And since then, I've learned quite a bit of fire, about fireflies and I've become enamored with these insects. And so I'm glad to be able to share what I know with you. Okay, so I'm not advancing. <laughs> I'll try this here. Ah, there we go. So this is um, my front yard where I lived in Massachusetts for many, many years, my neighbor's house in front of it. And this was a great place for fireflies. Um, I didn't cut the bushes down and um, they loved it there. And so I was able to watch and observe fireflies up close for quite a while. So um, as I said, I'd like to share what I want to, what I've learned with you. When I've done this, I've done this program many times for different groups at the Museum of Science and outside groups. And I've never found someone who doesn't love fireflies. Even if they don't like insects, people just love fireflies. In fact, it's the only insect that I've ever found that people have rituals built around fireflies to go out in the summertime with their families, sit there and watch fireflies. But what really surprised me is how little people know about fireflies. For such a popular insect, people know both basically about four things about fireflies and that's it. And what those four things are is fireflies come out at night, they fly, they flash, and people like them. And that's it. I've had many people say they didn't even know there was more than one type of firefly. So how is it that people know so little and yet really love fireflies so much? Well, first of all, there aren't many people studying fireflies. So there's very little, uh, very few places you can learn about fireflies. In fact, it wasn't until 2016 that the first adult book on fireflies, serious book on the natural history of fireflies came out. Now, before that time, there were many children's books and people would learn some things about children's books. And some of the books had good information, some of them not so good, but not until 2016 when a professor at Tufts University in Massachusetts, Dr. Sarah Lewis, came out with this wonderful book called Silent Sparks. And then a year and a half later, another book came out, Fireflies, Glowworms, and Lightning Bugs, more of a field guide to fireflies. And this was by another woman, um, Lynn Faust down in, in Tennessee. And uh, I will send the, uh, the information on these books to Becky and she'll get it out to you if you're interested in these books. If you like fireflies, I highly recommend them. But still, uh, very few people, these are the really only places to learn about fireflies. And fireflies are really so much more than just the four things that I mentioned. And so that's why this program I call The Secret Lives of Fireflies. What's really happening in a firefly meadow when you're sitting out there, maybe with your friends or families, loved ones, and saying, oh, isn't this wonderful? Isn't it so peaceful, so magical? And it is to us, but it's serious business for fireflies. And so that's what I want to get into. I want to talk about what's really going on in that firefly meadow. And I think, I'm pretty sure you'll find it just as amazing as I did. So in this talk, we're going to talk about identification. It's not very easy to identification, flash patterns, and more. We're going to talk about where and when to see fireflies and how to attract them and so support them in your, on your property. And then and finally, we'll talk about the Mass Audubon's Firefly Watch Citizen Science Project and how you can get involved and help scientists learn more about fireflies. Okay. So the first question is, what is a firefly? Well, everyone says, I know one when I see one. But just to review, first of all, it's an insect. Now, as we learned from uh, school in our early days, insects have three body parts, the head, which is uh, up here where the eye is, the thorax or chest where the legs are attached and the wings are attached and then the abdomen with all of the other stuff. And within the insect group, they are beetles. So beetles are identified by um, having two pairs of wings. The first pair that you see down here, uh, I should ask you, can you see my, my, um, my cursor? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay, good. So this first pair of wings is what they use for flying. And the second pair of wings, which 
uh, sticking out the back here are called elytra. They are hard and they don't flap when insects are flying. So it's a very uh, specific wing arrangement that they have. The second um, criteria to make a beetle is they have chewing mouth parts. So some insects like butterflies have mouth parts that are like straws, they sip from nectar. Uh, mosquitoes have in, uh, needle-like mouth parts. Fl some flies, their mouth is like a sponge, they sop up the food, but all beetles have chewing mouth parts. Now within the beetle group, okay, within the beetle group, uh, we have the firefly group, also known as lampyrids. Now the fireflies are characterized by a couple of things. If you look at the picture on the left here, you see that the thorax, the chest area, is covered by this shield called a pronotum, and the head is tucked underneath that, and that's typical of fireflies. They can stick the head out a little bit, but at rest, it would be usually hidden underneath the, uh, the pronotum. And then on the right-hand side, you see, as we all know, fireflies light up. This is a larval firefly, and this is the pupa. Now, beetles have a four-part life stage. They have the egg, which hatches into the larva. The larva will eat and grow and eat and grow and eat and grow, and eventually it will shed its skin and turn into the pupa. And in the pupa stage, it's changing into the adult that you see over here. All larval fireflies and all pupal fireflies have the ability to produce light. They can all glow. Even the eggs can glow very faintly, but not all adults can produce light. There have some, been some fireflies that through evolution have lost the ability to make light and they come out during the daytime instead of the night. So sometimes people ask me, they see a daytime firefly, they say, why is that a firefly? It doesn't light up. Well, it does is the lava and the pupa. And so that's, um, that's how we identify fireflies. Now within the firefly group here in the United States, there are 17 different groups so talk about firefly groups, or I'm actually talking about a genus, or the plural is genera. So a genus is a group of organisms that are very similar, but not exactly the same. And to pick out the individual, that would be the species. So we are the, uh, our genus is homo, humans homo, and our species is sapiens. So fireflies, there are 17 different groups uh, throughout the country. Also, there's about 120 to 150, nobody really knows how many different species of fireflies in the United States. Around the world, about 2,000 types. Here in Maine, we have maybe two dozen types of fireflies. The ones that flash, there are three groups. The first one are a group of fireflies called Photinus. Now, you're going to notice that most of these fireflies don't have common names. They just have scientific names because not many people can recognize them to give them names and the names wouldn't really mean much to people. Photinus fireflies are pretty small, about a quarter of an inch to a half inch long. And when you see them around, flying around at night when it's dark and you see this bright light, it's amazing that it comes from such a small insect. When Photinus fireflies flash, their flash is typically the yellowish green color you see in the word fire, uh, photinus. Okay, so that's the first group. And that's the one that scientists know most about. They're most easily found and they've been studied the most. There's still a lot that's not known about fireflies, uh, but that's the one they've studied most. The next one, next group is pyractomena. They're about the same size as the photinus, about a quarter of an inch to a half inch. And when they flash, they flash this orangish color or amber color. Someone said it looks like an ember of a campfire floating around. If you see that, you're looking at a pyractomena firefly. You can also identify them by the black edges that you see here on the pronotum. The third group is Photurus. Now in this picture, you see that the Photurus looks about twice the size of the Photinus and pyractomena, and they are. They're about three quarters of an inch to an inch long. So they're the big ones. And when they flash, they're Flash tends to be a darker green than the Photinus. My story is going to be mostly about Photinus and Photurus. And since the names are very similar and unfamiliar to most people, here's the way to keep them separate. Photinus is the tiny one. Photurus is the not so tiny one. Okay, so Photinus tiny, Photurus not tiny. Now coming back to this habitat where fireflies like my front yard, what's going to happen is as it starts to get dark, as dusk approaches, the male fireflies start to crawl out from their hiding places on the ground and crawl up on the bushes. And once they get there, they might start flashing while they're sitting there. 
Pretty soon, they take off and start flying around. The females are still on the ground or on the bushes. They're perched somewhere, but the males start flying around and they start flashing. So here we have a male that's flashing, flying over the terrain. And every few seconds, he's going to give a flash. Now, what he's doing is he's looking for a girl. Fireflies don't live very long, maybe about two to three weeks. And they're not out very long in the night. Some fireflies are only out about three, uh, three quarters of an hour, some are out longer. So they have to find females fairly quickly. And if he flies by a female that, um, that likes him, because she's sitting on the ground watching, she's going to respond with a flash. And I think that might have, oops, let's go back, see if we can get this to work again. Um, there was supposed to be a little flash in the grass where she sees him. Now, at the beginning of the season, there might be 50, 5 zero, 50 times more boys than girls. And the girls can be pretty choosy. The boys, on the other hand, when a firefly flash, a, a male flies by and sees a female respond to his flash, he has to get down there quick. Because not only does he now know where she is, but all the other boys in the neighborhood, they also know where she is. And they're going to try to get down there and mate with her first. So he's got to get there fast. His only purpose as an adult, they don't eat. They just fly around and try to attract a mate. It's just to mate. And as I said, competition is great at the beginning of the season. And they're a very short period of time for him to find and mate. So he's going to get down there fast. Now, other fireflies will flash in a different pattern. So we have other ones. This would you see an orange flash, this would be a pyractomena. Not only is the pattern timing a little bit different, but it's in a different location. It might be up in a tree. Some fireflies live over marshes. Some live in the middle of the woods, some over drier land, some wet fields. And so different types of fireflies will be in different habitats. Now, another firefly might flash a long streak. And by looking at these flashes, you can identify the different fireflies, or at least if you're knowledgeable, if you're experienced, uh, firefly experts might be able to tell what the, the species is. Now, another firefly might do a double flash. So here you see two flashes and then a space, and then two more flashes and a space. So when you go out to a field and watch fireflies, if you pay attention, you can start to see the different flashes. And then the last one I have, some will do a flicker and a very fast flicker. Some of them, the flicker is so fast, it's hard to see that it's actually flicker. So the female firefly sitting on the bushes is watching all of these fireflies, however many there may be in the meadow, and she can identify which is the same species, which one she wants to respond to by the flash. Okay, so that's one thing. She can tell, she can um, pick out that type of male with the same species by the flash. But how does she know which one of those types that she likes? She can be very choosy, and she may see three or four go by before she responds. What is she looking for? Well, many insects, when they mate, the male will give the female a gift. It's called a nuptial gift. For instance, some insects will catch and kill another insect and feed it to the female while they're mating. Other insects will catch and kill an insect and chew it up and regurgitate it and give that to the female when they're mating. Fireflies are a little different. The gift that he, the male gives to the female comes in the same process as mating. So the male will have a massive protein, it's called a, the nuptial gift, and he will deliver that to the female during the mating process. Okay, so she wants the boy with the best uh, with the biggest uh, gift to give her. She needs this extra protein for the health of her eggs. She can lay more eggs with more protein. She, they can be healthier, bigger. And remember, she doesn't eat as an adult. So um, this is very important for her. Now, later on in the season, after the males have made it a number of times and their protein gift is a lot smaller and there aren't nearly as many males around anymore because they passed on, the female is not nearly as choosy. At this point, any gift she can get is good. But at the beginning, she's very, very choosy. So that male, she can choose the one that she wants. This is the flash chart that we created. Uh, I created this chart from a lot of research uh, that I found online and uh, give you an idea of how this works. 
So you see up here, I don't know if you can see it. Um, mine is blocked by um, a bar. It says uh, yellow flash photinus species. And so these here are all the photinus species of fireflies that you might find in Maine. These are all the fireflies that you're likely to find here in Maine. Um, and if you look at a close up, the way you read this is so yellow green flash is a photinus species, and these are the different species here. So these all make a single flash. And if you look at marginalis, the males will flash for about, at about a third of a second and repeat that every three seconds at about 74 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. I always give the temperature because insects are cold-blooded animals and they slow down when it gets cold, which means their flash slows down. So the timing is a little bit longer in a cold day, a little bit shorter on a warm day. And these are the temperatures that the researchers uh, measured when they took these measurements. And the female will respond to the male about a quarter of a second after his flash and a very short flash for her. And so you can go down the list and look at all the different uh, the fireflies and, and what their flash patterns are. And we have the double flashes over here, some variable flash, meaning uh, consimilus will give maybe four, five, six, seven, eight flashes, and females could give you know, maybe one, two, three, four flashes. Um, a lot of the work still has to be done on getting these uh, accurate. Now, this is a male firefly, and we can tell he's a male. First of all, he's upside down. This is his head. You can see the eye, the thorax here, and then the abdomen. And on the bottom, the last two segments of the abdomen, the, abdomen, the last two full segments are white. That's his flasher. So those, that's where he lights up. The male photinus has the last two segments, the glow. The female, as you can see, here's her head here. And it's only the second to last um, segment that flashes. So that's how you tell a male from a female. Of course, if it's flying around flashing, it's a male. If she's sitting looking, yeah, it's a female. The pyractamina is a little bit different. The males look the same. You can see the male here too. But the female has a spot here and a spot here on the last two segments. Not the whole thing, uh, but that's the female arrangement of her flash uh, pattern, her flash lanterns. And the uh, photurus is a little different still in the female. The male looks the same, but the female, both of the last two segments are white, but only the center part lights up. So that's a little harder to tell when you're looking at them in the field, whether it's a male or a female. If everything goes right, the male finds the female, they get together and they start to mate. They're in this position for a short period of time, very soon after they switch to this position. And they can stay like this for hours and hours. Sometimes you find them the next morning still like this. It's not that the uh, sperm takes a lot of time to transfer, it's that nuptial gift takes a, a long time to travel from the male to the female. And very often they will crawl underneath the leaves and hide under the leaves. But if you go out and look in the morning, um, you might find them like this. So if everything goes well, the male meets the female, they mate, and she goes off and lays eggs. But there could be a problem, and the problem is the photurus. Now the photurus, remember, that's the not tiny one. When she is done mating, she flies down to where the photinus and the pyractamina are flying and looking for mate, and she'll sit in the bushes, and when she see a male photinus go by, she will flash, she will imitate the flash of the female photinus, right? So she knows the different languages of the different fireflies and she can imitate them. So what that does, when the male sees the photurus imitating the photinus, remember it's dark, so all he can see is the flash. He thinks it's a photinus, he flies down and comes up to meet her. And she has no interest in mating with him. And what she does, she grabs him and eats him. So you're sitting there watching all these fireflies saying, oh, isn't this pleasant? Isn't this uh, so you know, peaceful? Not for the fireflies. This is serious business, life and death business for the fireflies going on. Why does she catch them and eat them? Well, partly for the nourishment because she won't eat otherwise as an adult, as far as we know. But even more important, if you think about fireflies flying around at nighttime, are they easy to find? And the answer is yes, they're glowing. They're the only things that are glowing at night. They just light up. Are they easy to catch? Well, if you've ever 
been out, out trying to catch fireflies in the summer. You know, they're a lot easier to catch than, say, house flies and many other flies. They're pretty slow flyers. Well, if they are easy to find and easy to catch, why don't they all get eaten by predators, by other insects, by bats, birds, toads? And the reason is they're poisonous. They have poison in the blood. And this poison serves to protect not only them, but the eggs, the larva, and the pupa. And um, if they get attacked, they will force some of this blood, comes out as a little sticky white drop, out to pores in their legs and in their, in their, uh, in their thorax. If uh, an insect tries to eat them, it will gum up their mouth parts and it could kill them that way, or it could just kill them by the poison outright. Many times uh, birds have been seen to eat one, the first one they've ever tried, and they just get nauseous, they throw up and they wipe their mouth and try to wipe it out. There was a story I read uh, years ago about someone who had a pet lizard, a little gecko, fed him six fireflies and it killed the, the lizard. So they don't have many enemies because of this. They do have some, but not many, but the, um, the Forturis is their big prey, predator. The reason why the Forturis wants this is because she doesn't make those poisons and she wants them to protect her own self and her young. So by eating these other ones, she can acquire, assimilate these poisons in her body. It gets a little complicated. So I want to review a little bit. Here we have the male Photinus, the female Photinus, male Photurus, female Photurus over here. So we know what's supposed to happen is the male Photinus flashes, the female Photinus flashes back, the male finds down, flies down, finds a female, and they mate. But we also know the male Photinus flashes, and sometimes the female Photurus will flash like a female Photinus. The male Photinus flies down to the male female Photurus, thinks it's a Photinus, it's not, it's a Photurus, and he gets eaten. Every once in a while, the female Photurus, when she imitates a female Photinus, will do it wrong. She'll give a little extra blink. Now, when the male Photinus sees that, he says to himself, oh, it's not a female Photinus, it's a female Photurus pretending to be a female Photinus, I'm gonna stay away. And all the other fireflies that see this, all the other boys will stay away. And she goes without. So what's the male Photurus doing all this time? Well, he's flashing like a male Photurus. And the female Photurus is not interested because she's already made it, she wants to eat. So he stops flashing like a male Photurus and he starts flashing like a male Photinus. Now the female Photurus sees the male Photinus, the male Photurus flashing like a male Photinus. So she starts flashing like a female Photinus. The male Photurus now knows where she is and he can fly down and try to find her and try to convince her to mate. She has eating on her mind, so he has a job to convince her, but uh, that's what's going on. So all of this is going on, and some of these uh, behaviors that I mentioned have only been seen once or twice by scientists, or at least written up in their papers once or twice. So you're not going to see this all the time when you go out looking for fireflies, and there's probably a lot more um, to their mating and their signaling that we just don't know yet. A lot of surprises, a lot of secrets yet to tell. But that's what's going on. As I said, these female Photurus is the biggest predator of the uh, fireflies, the Photinus, and the Pyractamina. And they're the ones that have driven the evolution of the signaling of fireflies. So uh, over time, the Photinus will change their signaling patterns just a little bit to uh, evade the female Photurus until they've learned it, and so on and so on, until we have all the wonderful firefly patterns that we have now. Once the females lay their eggs, eggs hatch into the larva. And so here is a larva Photurus. The head is up here, that's the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. The abdomen, at the bottom of the abdomen, is a couple of light organs. Most of these swim uh, here in Maine two years underground. So you almost never see them, but every once in a while you get to see the larval photurus, the big ones, because they will come up above ground and walk along the ground in the uh, on a warm fall night, warm humid night in the fall or in the spring, uh, just before they're ready to hatch as adults, and they will glow. You can actually see them walking on the ground glowing. So if you like firefly watching, you can not only 
enjoy that in the summer. You can also enjoy looking for the larva in the spring and in the fall. So it's always something to look for. They are fierce predators. The Photurus uh, will eat a lot of snails. The Photinus eats a lot of um, worms and other soft body invertebrates. They, as I said, they're uh, fierce predators and they, they could be much smaller than the snail, but as long as there is just a small space of flesh, the firefly can bite that and inject a narcotic. And that will relax the, the prey, in this case, the snail, and then they uh, inject a digestive juice, which dissolves it, and they'll suck that up. So it's these larvae that do all of the eating. I mentioned there were fireflies that come up during the day. And here in Maine, we have three different genera of these fireflies, Pyropiega, Lucidota, and Alicnia. You can tell these from the other fireflies. They're out the same time, except they're out during the day, because they don't have the, uh, the stripes around the edge of the elytra, the white stripes that they ever have. Mm -hmm. And also, if you were to turn them over, you wouldn't see any white segments uh, because they don't have light organs. They do light up as uh, larvae and, and pupa, as I mentioned, but not as uh, adults. By coming out during the day, they avoid predation by the alichnia, by the uh, photurus, because they're only out at night. But the alichnia goes to even greater lengths than that, because the alichnia is not out during the summer when most fireflies are out. They hatch from their larvae around the, um, the beginning of the fall. And then they'll fly around and sometimes land on buildings. I've seen them on the side of my house, by the doors, whatever. And you look at it and you say, what's a firefly doing out this time? But this is the alignia, this is when they come out. And during the winter, they will find a tree uh, which has thick bark and many fireflies will congregate on it. It's called a colony tree. And they'll wedge themselves into the bark and spend the winter there. And then first warm day in the, uh, in the uh, end of the winter, I've uh, been looking now, uh, you'll find them coming out in the trees and mating and then flying around before they uh, lay their eggs and they're gone before the summer. So these are the winter fireflies. So you can also be on the lookout for fireflies in the middle of the winter. Or you might come across something like this. This is not a firefly. It's an, um, a mimic, a firefly mimic. It's a ground beetle. But by looking like a firefly, it might, might protect it. Insects or birds or whatever might see that and say, oh, I'm not eating that. Fireflies are poisonous. And so it, uh, it, is, it looks like it, but it's just not a firefly. Okay, there are other genera of fireflies that I didn't talk about. I just want to go over this quickly. We have, I mentioned uh, Photinus, Pyractamina, Photurus, the three that uh, we have around here in Maine that glow. In the country, there's maybe 34 or so species of Photinus, 16 of uh, pyroctamina. Nobody really knows how many photurus they are. They look so much alike, and the patterns of flash patterns are a difficult, uh, even at the best of times, to make a positive identification. So we're not really sure how many there are. Then there's two other species that flash. Micronaspis, which is only found in the salt marshes along the Florida coast, and by Salonica in uh, the mountains in Arizona, southern Arizona. But uh, obviously we don't have them here. Then there's a group of fireflies that glow. We call them glow worms. Um, and we don't have any of those here in Maine. Typically, glow worms, the females don't have wings. The adult females have not, don't have wings or they have very small wings that they can't, they can't fly. So they'll walk around on the ground and they will glow uh, trying to attract a male. Some of the males, uh, most of them don't glow. They've lost the ability to glow, but some of them, they can glow. Um, so these are uh, ones that don't blink, but actually glow as the female walks around. We think that uh, the males will follow the glow as well as follow chemicals or pheromones that these fireflies give off. Mm -hmm. Then we have the, uh, the daytime fireflies. We talked about the Lychnia, Lucidota, and Pyropega, but there's some others uh, that also um, that, that, uh, come out during the daytime. And you can see, I'm not going to go over them here, but there's... Uh, Two more. For some reason that we don't know, the, the uh, flashing fireflies have never got past the Rocky Mountains. So in the West, they have fireflies, but they've never seen them 
uh, flying around flesh and they just don't have them there. So if you want to see, if they want to see the fireflies, they have to come east and, and see our fireflies here. So that's a little bit of the secret lives of fireflies. And I'm going to turn the program over now to, to Doug, and he's going to continue the program. And he'll tell me when he wants the slides changed. Thank you, Don. Just realized I have to unmute myself. <laughs> there we go. Thank, thanks, Don, for bringing us this far. Yeah, so a quick review. This is uh, what Don was talking about earlier when he was identifying beetles and, and insects. And so here's some of those components. It's just a little back stitch. Uh, yeah, why don't we move again, Don? So this is a pretty spectacular photograph. This is uh, an award winner uh, of a Mass Audubon photography. Uh, contest. And this is Will uh, Draxler, 18-year-old. Uh, it's the old youth category. This was back in 2020. But I thought this is a wonderful uh, way to capture kind of the myth, mythical part of, of our enjoyment with, with fireflies and, the, and night as well. So there's, uh, you know, obviously it's, it's a um, multiple image, uh, long, long exposure of stars the kind of the big circular thing to the right is the constellations moving, and then all of the fireflies of the green flashes you see, uh, just um, um, kind of amazing. So fireflies are energy efficient for sure. Uh, in fact, you could argue that their lights are the most efficient lights in the world. So one hundred percent. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead and move to the next one. Sorry, Don. There we go. And you can, uh, there we oh, go. Sorry. No, that's good. That's good. Uh, so 100% of the energy created uh, is emitted <laughs> through light uh, in comparison to uh, an incandescent bulb that emits 10% of its energy as light. Uh, and a fluorescent bulb emits 90% of its energy through light. So fireflies uh, is, uh, efficiency is partly due to the luciferin, luciferin uh, heating uh, resistant properties. And so there's there are the the uh, the things that need to happen inside their flash flashing organs uh, for that to flash. Go ahead, Don, next one. So where and when do they look for fireflies? Uh, so yes, it's they appreciate moist areas at some point in their life cycle. Uh, one of the things that is causing their decline, and they are declining, in fact, I believe out of the 100 or 130 species estimated in, in the US, about 14 species are assessed as threatened. Uh, and that's due mostly to uh, habitat loss and degradation and then light pollution and climate change. Uh, and what climate change is doing in some places is, is drying up. Uh, you know, we have drought-like conditions a lot of the times now in the summer. And so their habitat is being uh, shrunk for sure. But yes, you want a, an area that, that is marshy or a wet edge of, of woods. Uh, like so many other uh, creatures and insects, they like those transition areas between field and woods or field and, and uh, wetlands. Thank you, Don. Next one. So if you're out there uh, catching and handling fireflies, you can do so respectfully by following these pretty simple guidelines. Uh, if you use a net, you want to choose a fine mesh, so not, nothing heavy, uh, which is you know, basically a butterfly net. And Don taught me how to do this. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty reliable. So if you see an, a firefly flashing, if you take the net and invert it so that you're now holding it so that the cone of the net is skyward, so the point is upward, and you gently hover over the firefly and then either drop or slowly lower the net over the firefly so it basically gets uh, pulled up into the, the top of the 
point of the net and then gently uh, roll it over and work uh, the net open till the bottom, you know, handling it very, very cautiously. Uh, and then you can transfer it, if you'd like, you can transfer it into a jar uh, that has some sort of oxygen exchange, whether it's got holes in the lid or, or what. Uh, and then you're not gonna wanna hold the firefly in any sort of container for very long. Uh, but the, the, the thing you really wanna do is not to uh, have insect repellent on your hands, uh, especially uh, you're gonna, when you're out firefly hunting or, or watching, you're gonna run into some other insects and yeah, they're most likely mosquitoes. Uh, so yes, it, it is a, a, a compromise, uh, but just don't put insect repellent on your hands. And then yeah, yeah using flashlights uh, can distract them. Uh, and, and you won't see them as as well if you're if you're flashing flashlights around. Uh, just like looking for owls and other nocturnal creatures, it's best to give yourself some time getting used to the dark. Uh, your your eyes will compensate for that dark, and um, usually uh, flashlights not going to help you that that much. So yeah, best time uh, 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 to see them during the day is. Um, at night uh, or at dusk. How about the next one? So questions we've had coming in, where have all the fireflies gone? It's not your imagination. There is some sort of, well, at least from my perspective, I have this very nostalgic, very romantic uh, idea of my youth and seeing you know, on a nightly basis and throughout the summer, these massive quantities of fireflies. I didn't, it just seems that way. Uh, but there were an awful lot of more fireflies back uh, 50 odd years ago, for sure. Uh, and you need to know where to find them to get anywhere near those, those numbers. On occasion, uh, I've been out looking for fireflies where it reminds me of those nights in my youth. Uh, so where you can, there are times where you can go out and see fireflies by the thousands. You're just not going to see them as, in, in many, as many places. Uh, so what can we do to help bring populations back? Don, if you can go to the next slide. There we go. Yeah, be more like Don. That's the kind of yard that you're gonna find fireflies on the left. The one on the right, not so much, obviously. Uh, basically, if you're putting, if, you, if your yard looks like the picture on the right, you're doing a number of things that it's gonna not, not attract fireflies. One, you're, you're mowing it too close to the ground. Two, you're putting too many chemicals on the, the, the lawn to keep, to keep it, uh, safe, it's not gonna be safe for fireflies. How about the next slide? So there we go. Dawn's yard looks more like the left-hand slide to a firefly and the right-hand slide is, is the neighbor's yard. So remember some of the things that fireflies as larval, larval stage anyways, eating these, the, the snails, the slugs, worms, Etc. So any sort of uh, unkept ground cover is great spot for them. And the next stone. You can create a water feature in your yard somewhere or your neighborhood community. Uh, that will help. Again, at some point in their life, fireflies are gonna really need to be near water. And the next slide. Other things you can do is plant native pine trees, especially around the perimeter of the yard. We all, you know, many of us, uh, if we have a yard that we maintain, many of us want at least some grass. We, we, that's understandable, some sort of lawn. But if you can plant on the perimeter of that lawn, uh, sort of native species, and pine uh, trees in particular 
uh, are, are give them great uh, cover and shade that they can, you know, low, kind of a low profile, low canopy, if you will, uh, in, the, in the shade. And then it, uh, it gives them good places to escape uh, from predators at night as well. And they'll grow quickly. So white pine is relatively inexpensive to plant in your yard and certainly Maine uh, is a good spot for white pine, but any, any evergreen will work for sure. Um, one of the things that the pine canopies also do is help block out, because of the vegetation is pretty thick and it's year round, it uh, blocks out beams of artificial light uh, which you know can interfere with mating, and the needles and branches that drop to the ground create the ideal spot for larva to flourish beneath the tree. And next slide. Pretty self-explanatory. Shut off your lights. And so here's some solutions. Convert your security lights to motion detective lights, so at least they're they go off at some point during the evening. Uh, use a lower wattage solar lights to illuminate, uh, illuminate walkways. Draw your shades uh, and then convince your neighborhood, neighborhood to use less outside lights. Um, and you can do that perhaps by take, taking them on a firefly walk so they understand the impact that lights have on fireflies. And then, yeah, ask if you're in a community where you have a lot of commercial business, uh, see if they can use less lighting. You can see that a, a, even a, a spotlight or a, a security light just eliminates the possibility of, of fireflies uh, seeing each other flash. And next slide. Yeah, and this was a, 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 a question that people sent in quite a few times. And this is a, it's a great question. Yes, uh, if you let the grass grow, uh, you get a much better chance of, of seeing fireflies and fireflies using your community. Uh, especially, you know, the meadows, if you, you know, if you do want to keep the meadow uh, from growing into, uh, you know, its natural succession into a forest, uh, yes, you can mow. But I we would recommend mowing after uh, the mating season. So in Maine, it's probably you want to wait till um, you know end end of July, early August, kind of thing. Uh, and that way, uh, things will be the females and larvae will be down in in ground below the mowing height. And then next slide. And start a brush pile. Uh, it's perfect area both for protection and for uh, laying eggs. Uh, for the uh, a lot, many of the species of fireflies lay their eggs in rotten logs, actually, and other brush uh, on a forest floor or on the perimeter of a yard. Uh, and the larvae feast on the slugs, snails, and worms that this style of habitat, damp habitat, attracts. Um, yeah, and then so just in general, it's best not to be so tidy with your yard, and that goes beyond just fireflies as well. It creates more of a, a usable habitat for many insects to uh, to cycle through. Uh, next slide. Yeah, and one thing you can do is attend a program or festival. Uh, Don is headed down to Pennsylvania, I believe, again this year. There's a, and Don, you can speak to that if you um, you go to one where there's quite a few people uh, that attend. Yeah, some of the Firefly festivals I've been to have had uh, over a thousand people come, so it shows the popularity. The one I'm going to is down in Pennsylvania in the Allegheny Mountains, and specifically, we're looking for the synchronous firefly. That's a firefly where the males come out later at night in the in the woods, in the dark woods, um, not so much in the fields, and they flash six times, once a second for uh, six seconds, and then they 
stop for six seconds and then they do six more flashes and they stop. Well, what they end up doing is very soon after they start flashing, they all start doing it together. So the whole woods light up with six flashes and then total darkness for six seconds. And then they light up and they keep doing that. And so it's quite a spectacular sight. Unfortunately, we don't have them up here. Uh, the, the place in Pennsylvania is probably about the north, northernmost uh, where they've been found. So they're more of a southern firefly. Great, thank you, Don. And next slide, we're gonna introduce the Firefly Watch program. So Mass Audubon, thanks to Don, uh, started, started this uh, project called Firefly Watch. And a lot of it is through researchers from Tufts University as well. And what we hope is to learn about the geographic distribution of fireflies uh, and what environmental factors impact their abundance. So we invite you to, uh, to join the project and anyone in North America can participate. Um, and all you need to do is spend at least 10 minutes once a week during firefly season, uh, observing fireflies in one location. It's not that big of a lift, uh, your backyard or nearby field. And all firefly sightings or lack thereof are valuable. So how this works, and th there'll be, uh, what you can do is go to the site uh, if you wanted to learn more, but we're gonna do a quick uh, introduction to what this might look like. So next slide, please, Don. So here we go. We're gonna uh, give you a, an opportunity here to see if you can become a Firefly watch uh, watcher. And how we do this is um, we're gonna show you a flash pattern in the lower right-hand rectangle. And uh, you'll have uh, three counts within 10 seconds, uh, basically. And what you're gonna do is count the flashes not just the, the flashes, uh, but the period in between the flashes as well. Uh, and so then we'll show you the cheat sheet and see if you can come up with uh, an answer and you can throw it in chat. And so go ahead, Don, let's try, we might wanna run this a couple of times. So here we go. Go back here. Okay, so now if you hit it again, we should have our cheat sheet. So what did you see in that period of 10 seconds? In which one do you think it was? And then go ahead and put it in the chat. Uh, and I don't see the chat, so if somebody could. I can jump in here. This is Thank Becky. You. We've Thank you, had Becky. a couple of guesses of number five, uh, one guess of number six, and uh, more guesses of number five. Excellent. So go ahead, uh, Don, and I think if you hit it again, it should. There we go. Number five is correct. We'll go to the next one and you'll see that you know you, you can practice these for sure oh much different so we're, with that one we're noticing uh not just the the flash pattern but the color and kind of the the shape it made as it flashed So we have some guesses of number three, a photinus. Exactly. So Becky, I think we have a potential, we'll do one more. I think we have a potential uh, band of firefly watchers here. <coughs> Number 
And then Don, if you want to show the cheat sheet again. I found that one a little bit harder. <laughs> Let's see, we had some guesses of number two, one guess of number four. Number two, it, it is, yeah. But you can see why number four would be a, a possibility. Uh, but th these are things that, you know, this exercise is basically, uh, and, and you, there's no guarantee you're going to see these particular species where you are in Maine. But uh, this is uh, a good, what we hope this does is give you confidence that, you know, with a little bit of training, uh, you could do this pretty accurately. Uh, so. Yes, we strongly encourage folks that, that want to participate to do just that. And then how about the next slide? This is what you will be asked to do uh, when you fill it in. So you can see it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, you don't need any scientific uh, equipment to be able to do this. Uh, Essentially, what we're looking for is some baseline information, weather, wind, uh, humidity, uh, et cetera. And then we'll wrap it up with uh, the last couple of slides, but this next slide. So what we do, what are we doing with this information? A lot of citizen science projects uh, have, have the, the name citizen science, but not all of those uh, projects gather information that's actually used in real time. And so this is a, a list of folks that will use this information as it comes in uh, as part of their the work they do with fireflies, their research. Uh, and so this, this is a, a citizen science project that is making a difference, is giving data to scientists that are already uh, find it useful. Um, yeah, including Don. He, Don continues to, as, uh, as we talked about before people came on, Don continues to do a lot of, of uh, training and leading programs at different Firefly events. So all, all very helpful. And then finally, yes. So please, if you'd like to join Firefly Watch, go to the website and we'd love to have you on board. And with that, Don and I thank you very much for listening and uh, we would ha be happy to answer questions you might have. Great, we have a couple of minutes here for some questions. Thank you both so much. That was a, uh, a great deal of really wonderful information. Um, I think you answered a, a lot of the questions that we um, had. Um, let us see here. Um, one question that we asked are um, that someone asked, uh, are there any firefly species that are on the endangered species list at all? Do you want me to take that or do you want to take it? Oh, uh, I, I'm all, I'm aware of threatened, uh, but I don't know of any specific that are endangered. One of the things is, uh, in order to know if something is endangered, you need to have some data on, on uh, where these organisms used to be and how common they were and where they are and are now. And up until Firefly Watch, there had been no census on fireflies. And so that's one of the reasons why we started the project. But still, there's just not enough data, I don't believe, to know if something is actually, uh, should be placed on the endangered list. Probably the answer would be yes, but I don't believe we have enough information to do that. Another good reason to uh, join Firefly Watch is to help gather that information. Yes. And then uh, I think we, if we could have one more question here. Um, one question was, uh, Don, I don't know if you can share any good spots in Maine to uh, search for uh, fireflies um, or perhaps uh, some characteristics people can look for that will give them some good indications that they might see fireflies in a spot. Sure. As far as specific locations, 
No, because I haven't been around, I haven't been traveling around Maine uh, on summer nights looking to see where they are. Uh, first of all, you have to find a place that uh, you're allowed into at nighttime. I know a lot of places like a lot of the Audubon sanctuaries and so forth are closed at night. So either you'll have to find someone else to sneak on there when no one's looking. But as Doug mentioned, um, places that uh, have moisture, because that's what the larva like where their, their prey tend to live, open fields are good because you can see them a lot better than in the woods. Um, so I would pick, you know, parks, um, schoolyards, so if they have some land that's not, uh, you know, totally grassed out. Um, you'd be surprised where you can find them if you get out and look. Some people say, you know, they haven't seen them in a long time. And my first question is, well, have you been out at night and looked? And they said no. So I think you would be surprised if you go out and look um, at some of these places. Road, even on the side of the road, if there's a uh, ditch there with a little field next to it where there's moisture, you might find them. Try to stay away from places that are well lit because they can uh, affect fireflies and you might not find nearly as many in welded places. Um, but that's sort of a general idea of, of where you might want to look. We, uh, we do a firefly walks uh, every season and, and uh, this is just an anecdotal story, kind of fun. Uh, we did one at Daniel Webster Wildlife Sanctuary here in Marshfield, Massachusetts. And it's about a 600 acre, uh, now freshwater potential uh, essentially freshwater environment grassland and so it's perfect uh perfect habitat for fireflies and um w one year uh we were just started the program and a, and a car pulled up and a, a number of younger teenagers came came out with their parents to the show to, to the program and uh one of the uh, young youngsters said, "Oh, I hate bugs. You know, I I don't like anything about insects." And uh, and my coworker said, "Oh, by the end of the night, you might change your mind." And uh, which was like throwing down the gauntlet. So, but we had fireflies at Daniel Webster, like I hadn't seen in a long, long time, um, thousands, uh, and we couldn't get the family to leave. <laughs> and the teenagers were like, I can't believe it. Uh, anyway, so it, yeah, it's, it, but we've been back there a few times and and not had as good a luck. So a lot of it has to do, it, like everything, it's sick. Their populations are cyclical to begin with. Uh, and also it is uh, kind of time. It's important to be there just at the right time. And you never know quite you know what the conditions you can make some predictions but um you got to be at the right place at the right time a lot of times excellent well i know doug you have a, a hard stop time at seven um and if folks have additional questions um feel free to uh send them along to me um at kelt and i'm happy to pass them along to uh doug and don um and uh doug can they can folks send additional questions to firefly watch at mass would that be okay yes they can great well thank you both so much for for joining us and thanks to everyone uh, for joining the program um like i said i will send out an email with a link to the recording uh either tomorrow or early next week and with that everyone have a lovely evening and you know get ready to look for some fireflies when the weather warms up Thank you, Becky, and thanks for everyone that joined us. Yes, thank you. Thanks very much. Have a good evening, all. Bye.